Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you see a huge mess behind me, it's because I just got done filming this crazy makeup look for my channel. So stay tuned if it's already up. I will link it in the cards and in the description box. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel so you can check this makeup look out if you guys are interested. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video for me and I had planned to film this bunch of months ago it just like came to me and then I totally forgot about it I did write notes and I saved it because I knew I was gonna film this video one day and then I do have a Facebook page for my YouTube channel that I never really talk about and somebody well not somebody my friend Anna had messaged me saying hey did you film your wedding planning tips video yet because this just happened and she had a picture of an engagement ring so really exciting and I was like how the hell did I miss this message because I only saw it today in July and I think she got engaged like the start of the year so it was kind of silly of me but anyway I was like shit I should really film this video we're right smack in the middle of summer wedding planning season and I am a couple of months away from our two year wedding anniversary so I thought it would be fun to film this video. Now a little bit of background about me and us and our wedding. I am very like Sri Lankan and my parents are very Catholic Sri Lankan folks. So me and my husband envisioned like getting married on a beach in Hawaii. That was not the plan for us. My parents insisted on us having a Catholic church wedding. So if you have any particular questions on having a Catholic church wedding, um, that's definitely a little bit different, especially if one of you is not Catholic. Um, there is like a process. I don't think you have to convert, but it's like encouraged. And my husband was really interested in the process. So he went through like the classes to convert or not convert because he was already like non-denominational Christian. Um, so he went through the classes for a year and then he was confirmed the day before our wedding. So at our rehearsal, they confirmed him. And so it was kind of a process. Usually you're confirmed at Easter time. They decided to make him wait until the day before our wedding. Um, we had to go to like wedding prep classes with the priest that married us. And also, fun fact, if you are Catholic, they don't encourage you to live together before you get married. So however you want to address that issue with your church is up to you. I'm not going to sway you either way. So that was a bit of a, you know, hurdle that we had to overcome. But if you guys want like personal details on that, definitely DM me on Instagram. I don't want to go ahead and talk about that here on my channel. So we did all of that and then we had the hardest time just with our wedding because we had to plan um, an international wedding. So my parents live back home in Sri Lanka. My husband's mom lives in South Africa. We had relatives that were gonna fly in and then of course all our friends and family here. So I can't even tell you how we picked the date but basically it worked out where September was just gonna be the best time for everyone. So we ended up with September 24th as our wedding day and it was a Saturday I do believe. Great tip is if you have a specific day in mind obviously you want to go ahead and get your venue as soon as possible. I know it is cheaper to get married on a Friday as opposed to a Saturday. Saturdays are like the most expensive. They'll also give you a discount if you get married on a Sunday and also any weekday it's going to be more affordable. So if you are planning on a budget and people don't care what day you get married, like if you're planning like a destination wedding, definitely like opt for a random day of the week because you'll probably save a bunch of money doing that. Now I have to tell you guys, I know a lot of girls like have their wedding day like planned and they like dream up this day blah 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 blah. For me wedding planning was not something I was excited for. Me and my husband already got married at the courthouse a year prior to our actual like wedding ceremony and reception and stuff like that and I just was not excited to plan my wedding. I didn't want to spend any money. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted like the most low budget situation that we could come up with and luckily my maid of honor, one of my maid of honors uh, was a wedding planner for a living that was part of her job so she had a lot of great ideas that just like helped me cut costs which I'm super duper grateful for so I want to share those tips with you. It definitely does help. I didn't have like a wedding planning binder or anything like that. I know that's like one of the most exciting things when you get engaged. People love like checklists and their budget 
binders and all that jazz um, was not for me but if that works for you totally go for it I didn't really have a budget per se my parents definitely helped with almost all the wedding costs and of course my husband's family as well but I think a majority of it was my parents I don't know who cares anyway so I didn't really have a budget but I wanted to do everything as like cheaply as I could and then when it came to picking our wedding party we had a tough time especially looking back now we don't really talk to most of the people that were in our wedding party we didn't have an obnoxious wedding party but it was three and three and yeah it was I don't know I feel like it's interesting because I don't want to like tell people how to live their lives but I would say definitely like honestly just like choose the people that are closest to you I had one bridesmaid that literally left our wedding reception like after the photos and didn't even like tell me about it which was really strange it was just kind of this, this awkward situation where at like we used to be really close and then she like moved away and we had always talked about being in each other's weddings so I think she got engaged first but then I got engaged and then I felt like I had to have her in my wedding but then she ended up not asking me to be in her bridal party she wanted me to be like her personal attendant or something it was like a huge mess so anyway needless to say we're not really friends anymore and then we had one of our groomsmen who was married to one of my friends who then ended up becoming my husband's friend and then they ended up getting divorced so we don't talk to him like <laughs> literally it's crazy. In two years, like, we don't talk to half our wedding party. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. It's it's not that big of a deal. Like, you don't need, like, 80 people to be in your wedding party, honestly. But that's just my two cents on that. As far as the guests go, we had a tough time, again, because there were a lot of people that we are more so, like, acquaintances of. And I didn't know, like, how to, like, cut people off. And, you know, sometimes you just want to, like make everyone feel included so our guest list was pretty hefty for the type of wedding we had but it was fun i don't regret like inviting the people that we invited and i think that might be a good segue to talk about invites again i wanted to save on everything i could so for wedding invites since i have a youtube channel and my husband's very creative and we have friends that like to make videos we actually did a wedding video invite and it's actually on my channel so i will link it up in the cards if you guys want to watch it it's such a great way to save money and i feel like you know it's 2018 i don't know why people expect like a freaking paper invite to a wedding so we film this video it's super duper cute it our whole wedding was like travel themed that's what we settled on and I thought the video was perfect with that and just like our different backgrounds travel was really really cute it just worked out really well so watch the video if you're interested in how we did it and basically we just got everyone's email addresses emailed them our wedding invites and then we did RSVPs on Facebook because I just made like a Facebook event for our wedding day and then just had everyone RSVP on there so we had a rough estimate of who was coming to our wedding um, as far as date and venue go again I kind of talked about how we picked the date as as far as venue we did tour a lot of beautiful venues even in Fargo North Dakota there are a lot of beautiful like barn themed venues and like a lot of outdoor spaces but then after we decided to have a church ceremony you know we couldn't have a ceremony anywhere else if you get married in the Catholic Church, you have to actually get married in a church. Most priests won't do an outdoor ceremony. So that was kind of already decided for us. We got married in a beautiful cathedral. If I have pictures, I will throw them up in between here. And then we it didn't really make sense for us to rent a space, you know, out of town, even though the barn situation is gorgeous. The other thing about those wedding venues that I don't think like I knew about, so I don't know if you guys do, basically you pay just to rent the space so that's a hefty amount depending on if it's like a saturday sometimes just the space is like three four thousand dollars which i think is ridiculous and then you have to pay for food you know rentals so if you need tables chairs all of that is a separate additional cost you need to find a caterer get the food down there i mean it's just a lot of freaking work and like i was not down for that even though some of these venues are gorgeous so skipped out on that and then our friends had gotten married a couple of months prior to us at the radisson hotel in fargo and 
Um, they had a perfect space. So upstairs at the Radisson in my town, they had had office spaces that were currently not occupied. So they were letting people have events there and it was just like the perfect like amount of space. So we opted to go with that and that did not have a rental fee. We just had to do a food and beverage minimum. And then we got the space and it came with the chairs, the tables, the linens. So I really didn't have to do a whole lot as far as renting stuff out, which was perfect. So once we got the venue figured out, it made things a lot easier. Um, the efficient, we didn't need one because we got married at the church and we had already been married at the courthouse. So I didn't have to worry about any of that. So for photographer, photography was really important to me. But again, photographers tend to be super duper expensive. So we went with a local girl here. She did an amazing job. She actually did my bachelorette party photos. I'll try and link those too. Um, this is kind of going, going on a little side tangent, but uh, I didn't want like a crazy wild bachelorette party. That's just not me. I don't like to drink necessarily. I don't like to be out too late. So my one maid of honor planned this spectacular bachelorette party for me. It was so fun. Basically, we did a like white theme. So everyone wore white and I wore this green dress. I'll throw up some pictures and they did such a good job. Like all my friends, they did like these cool balloons and we just had like a fun photo shoot and those pictures, oh my god, I'm gonna like cherish for the rest of my life. I'll show you guys some pictures. So that was a fun bachelorette party. We just had some food downtown and maybe went out like for a little while and it was just perfect. Like no drama. Love it, love it, love it. That was a great bachelorette party idea in case you guys are planning a bachelorette party. My one friend is just like really good at like making them appropriate for the bride, which I think is a wonderful skill. Some people don't like think of the person that they're planning the party for. They just plan the party they want, not like what the bride wants. So they did an awesome job. Kudos to them. But where was I going? Okay, so she did my uh, bachelorette party photos. So then we also had her do our wedding photos and she actually threw in a second shooter as well. I would definitely recommend a second shooter, um, especially if your photographer offers it. My one regret for our wedding is not having a videographer. Again, deciding to cut costs, we actually just bought a GoPro and had our friends film the wedding at different points in time. And we've been married for almost two years and me and my husband were planning on editing the video and neither of us wanted to touch it. I personally am just kind of like worried because I'm like, ah, it's so special. Like, I don't want to edit it badly. And he's like, no, you can do it. Like, I believe in you. He I feel like he's better at editing, but he's kind of like left me with the task. So maybe like five years from now, we'll edit the video and you guys will get to see it. Um, so I really wish that we had put some money towards a videographer. A wedding trailer would have been kind of nice to have or a video, especially because we had a lot of guests coming in from out of the country, which is a big deal. I had some uncles, like my godparents came to my wedding and they came all the way from Sri Lanka. I don't know when the next time they'll be in Fargo, North Dakota is. So I really wish we had gotten more video and also more photographs. And I think that was personally my fault. I should have maybe talked to my photographer more and had her take more pictures of me with our guests. We don't really have a lot of pictures of like our parents and, you know, friends and family like enjoying the reception. So that's something I wish I had kind of thought about ahead of time. As far as florals go, I did have a vendor in mind here in town, but once I got the quotes, I like shit my pants and I was like, no way, I'm not paying <laughs> that price for flowers. So I decided for centerpieces, the hotel had like tall glass vases that they lent me and I just got little floating candles. Honestly, nobody remembers that shit when it comes to a wedding. I know girls, I know, I get it and boys that are watching this. I know it seems like, you know, the biggest deal in the world and it's the biggest day in, in your life and all that shit. But at the end of the day, wouldn't you rather have a house? I am so grateful that we didn't like spend an arm and leg. We have a house, I love it. I would rather take wedding planning money and the amount of money you spend on a wedding and put it towards something that's gonna last you in the future, like a car, a house. And the one thing too, even though our wedding was low budget, like we didn't get to go on a honeymoon and I hope someday that me and my husband get to do that because I feel like that would have been more exciting for me and him. Again, also since we were already married. So 
Anyway, so florist, we actually decided we there was this guy at a local store, I think it was Michael's, um, that did artificial flowers and um, he did all my boutonnieres and um, bouquets and you guys, like I'm going to throw in pictures. I don't think anyone knows that my flowers were artificial because he did such a good job. I think we chose amazing colors that just look very natural. And in the end, I'm so happy we went the artificial route because I still have my florals from my wedding. And yeah, it's really cool to just like look back. So yeah, and it's a nice decoration for my home too. And it's very, very sentimental. So that worked out great. I didn't have to pay to have them preserved and all that jazz. I just got artificial flowers and they looked amazing so if you guys have that option I would totally recommend it obviously you want it to look natural and not cheap but he did a fantastic job so I loved that idea and as far as food goes really buffet is the most expensive and then plated I didn't want either of those options because honestly I don't really love American food so what we decided to do was just do heavy hors d'oeuvres and that worked out really well just because we were able to have more food and more options instead of like a plated meal which most plated meals at weddings suck especially in Fargo I haven't ever had like a mind-blowing meal at a wedding so I thought hors d'oeuvres worked and then we could cater to different food preferences so we had veggie trays and chicken nuggets and meatballs and all of that food was really yummy and it worked out really well for us as far as alcohol goes we didn't really want an open bar we couldn't afford an open bar my husband's dad actually <laughs> offered us an open bar until I think the dance started or something so we had like a cutoff point because honestly like he wanted to pay for an open bar for us and I told him like you know what we'd rather just have the money to put towards a down payment on a house and totally no regrets there because I didn't drink on my wedding day I don't know if my husband did but um, that worked out perfectly for us so you guys can make a decision on open bar I know it's nice to have it's like a great way to thank your friends and family uh, for coming to your wedding but we couldn't afford it so yeah that's my word on that DJ I just put out like a feeler on one of those like Facebook pages in my area and got a bunch of recommendations yeah so it was okay the DJ like oh, I wasn't like mind blown but it's hard to find good DJs in the town I live in anyway so yeah, I was hoping we would have more of like a party at the end because I love to dance, but our wedding dance ended at about 11 o'clock, which I'm kind of bummed about, but I think that might have a direct correlation to having an open bar. I feel like the drunker your guests are, the longer they're going to stick around. So that's something also when you're getting married in a downtown area where there's bars, people mostly tend to leave your wedding so they can go to the bar. So something to think about that's that as far as registry I we did have a lot of the stuff we needed so we just registered for things we needed at Target I liked to put like more affordable things I didn't want to do like a lot of like really spendy stuff but we were so happy with the things we got we got everything we needed um, some of the stuff we didn't need so we actually returned or we got multiples of yeah and people gave us a lot of like gift cards too which was amazing so what we ended up doing with a lot of our money that we got from our wedding we saved it till November for Black Friday and actually bought ourselves an awesome TV for our basement so that's kind of something that me and Rail love to do we love to watch TV together so that was like our like all our money that we had that wasn't like a physical item uh, we just used towards that TV and that turned out to be awesome because it basically all that money basically paid for the TV which was awesome and then I already covered invites I covered honeymoon bridesmaids dresses this was awesome I have to talk to you guys about this because I am not a believer of like everyone's like one dress for every body type and I think it's a huge mistake that brides make because they like believe in their minds that the uniform thing is the way to go it's traditional blah 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 blah, blah. but honestly like it's it's you got to think about your bridesmaids too and I know it's more trendy now to have like the mismatch wedding like bridesmaids dresses which I think is awesome but another thing you know brides need to keep in mind is these people have to pay to be in your wedding and yes it's an honor to be in somebody's wedding but try to think of the cost of a bridesmaids dress and some people are in multiple weddings 
per year so like try and be a little lenient like don't be an asshole like I've heard of brides like making their bridesmaids change their fucking hair color and like oh my gosh it's ridiculous I swear somebody told me that she had to like get extensions because this bride she like this wedding she was in the bride wanted all of them to have like identical hair and I was like Oh my god, you're fucking kidding me. Like, I thought that was ridiculous. So anyway, I ended up getting really lucky. So I had three bridesmaids. One actually bought this, like, dress from Nordstrom. And she was splitting it. So, she, like, she was splitting it with one of her bridesmaids so that they could wear it. So she, so she was going to wear it to my wedding. And then her bridesmaid was going to wear it in her wedding. And they found, like, 80 different reasons to wear the dress. So it didn't end up costing too much. So my bridesmaids ended up finding their dresses from the store that I had bought my wedding dress from and it was like a sale dress and so they both got their dresses for like under 20 bucks. It was such a great deal. Yes, they needed some alterations but I think bridesmaid dresses can be as low as $100 all the way up to like $200, $300, $500. I don't even know. I've never been in a wedding in the U.S. <laughs> Still waiting for my friends to get married. Anyway, so that's that. So just something I want to, you know, tell brides, like, don't be that bride. Like, try and, you know, reduce the cost for people to be in your wedding. Don't make it a pain. Don't make them regret being in your wedding. Because I feel like a lot of people do that. And I've heard plenty of horror stories from my friends that have been in weddings that have to buy, like, these ridiculous freaking dresses. So that's that and then I wanted to talk about save the dates we didn't really do save the dates like I said I made a Facebook event and I called it like save the date first and then I called it like the Harris wedding that was also our hashtag if anyone cares is called um the Harris affair yes that's what I called it I don't really like the punny hashtags I don't get it I think they're super obnoxious because half the time I'm trying to like figure out how to like read them uh, but that's just me on a personal level, so I'm just giving you my unsolicited advice on that. I don't get the punny um, hashtags. For rehearsal dinner, I wasn't really planning one, but we got super lucky and Rail's family decided to host. His dad offered up his house and we had an awesome rehearsal dinner and they catered Indian food, which is like our favorite thing. So that was amazing and so easy. And we just had, you know, our wedding party and parents there. So that was wonderful. As far as the cake, my gorgeous friend, super talented, she actually made our wedding cake. So we saved money there too, because there was a bakery or a, yeah, a bakery I had in mind in Fargo, Nicole's. Oh my gosh, but I can, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't part with the cash for that cake. Like, I knew she would kill it on the cake. That would be amazing. But again, I just, I just couldn't. So my friend baked this amazing naked, it's called a naked cake. I'll try and throw up a picture if I find one for us. And she did a phenomenal job. So I don't even regret that. And she gave that to us as our wedding gift. And it was amazing so super happy about that and then we did cupcakes and my maid of honor again that was brilliant at planning weddings told me hey you know what get them at walmart they do an amazing job and it worked out so our wedding cupcakes were from walmart and nobody knew any different and they tasted amazing and were affordable so little money saving tips for you guys there as far as a shower and bachelorette party i already covered my bachelorette party i did have a shower my other maid of honor hosted it showers are really fun and i don't know they're they're fun it is fun to get like gifts from your you know most loved girlfriends and friends and family and stuff like that so i did enjoy my shower as far as wedding shoes i made a huge boo-boo Oh my god, I <laughs> I really fucked up on my wedding shoes. So I found these amazing wedding shoes. Did I talk about my dress? I can't remember if I talked about my wedding dress. Okay, let's talk about my wedding dress real quick. So I didn't know what I wanted. You know how people say like, oh my god, I just like, I've dreamed of this day forever and I want this line and princess cut and A line and blah 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 mermaid and I had no idea what to expect so um we went some of my bridesmaids and I went wedding dress shopping we went to the David's and like some of the stores that are like the typical stores you go to I hated all of the dresses I tried on like at David's bridal I felt like a whale in every dress because none of the dresses fit me 
Um, and I know you can get them altered, but oh, they were just so badly made and like they were all like white, white, white dresses. And then like, yeah, I just hated every dress. And I had one bridesmaid that was really trying to keep me on budget. So it was really hard. It was a terrible experience. I hated the whole thing. Um, then I went to Your Day by Nicole, which is a local boutique. Um, here in Fargo. I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, went in there, only went with one other person. It was so cute. It was Rail's old neighbor. Um, she is like our second mom is what we call her and she's a little bit of an older lady. And we went in. It was so much more relaxed. I don't know how other people's experiences have been at the store, but for me it was very relaxed and all the dresses just fit me, which made me so happy because I know I'm not like the skinniest girl in the world, but I'm not like the biggest person either. And all those David's bridal dresses just made me feel huge, which is not the way you want to feel on your wedding day. So I really, in my mind, really wanted a two-piece wedding dress. Um, it had start, just started trending, the two-piece deal, so it was really hard to find a two-piece. Now I feel like everyone's doing like two-piece wedding dresses, but... I wanted a two-piece wedding dress so I had mentioned this to them and they had me try on a few and the dress like I don't know like you guys whatever your opinion is but I loved my wedding dress like as soon as I put it on I was like <gasps> like we're in trouble and it was a designer dress um, it was Waters Woot by no it's uh, what was the brand shoot it was somebody recently asked me what my dress wedding wedding dress brand was it's like woot by waters i think is the brand so my wedding dress originally was three thousand something dollars and i got lucky because they had a sample that was they kind of gave it to me as a at a discount i still think i paid a ridiculous amount of money for that dress but again it was a designer dress I didn't think I could pull the trigger on it. It was so expensive, um, but I just knew like that was the one and my mom was freaking out because she wanted me to wear white and my dress was blush in case you can't tell in the pictures. And um, she was like, no way, no way you're not wearing a blush dress. But the lady I went wedding dress shopping with was just so nice and she loved it just like me. She thought it looked amazing on my skin. Um, with my skin tone, like the blush really, like it just worked so well. And then I just couldn't decide and I couldn't afford it. So I tried it on for rail and he loved it too. So between him and his mom, they actually bought me my wedding dress, which was so, so sweet. And yeah, that was like the biggest splurge I think for our wedding was actually my wedding dress. And I kind of feel bad about it, but the way I justified it is I'm so into fashion and I don't know, like I never went to prom, like whatever. So that was like my splurge for the wedding. So I love my dress and it's true what they say, like when you try on the dress, you just know. It's so cliche, but like I just felt so beautiful in that dress. So I love, love, love that. And then so what happened was... Obviously when the blush dress you can't wear like white shoes, you know, and the blue shoe thing I thought was kind of like cliche So I wasn't sure what kind of shoe to get and I love like the Miss uh, Misha What whatever that wonderful shoe brand is Didn't really see anything I liked from that designer that I could afford and so I don't know I had I think I had some shoe, but I wasn't like 100% sold on it and then I was in the cities and I was at Nordstrom Rack and I found this shoe. I was like, oh my god, this is going to go perfectly with my dress. It's so trendy. It's so cute. It had like a four to five inch heel. But in my mind, I was just like, oh my god, this is the shoe. So I bought it. But on my wedding day, guys, by the time we got to photos, like my feet were killing me. So I think even though like I, I'm like a trained professional in heels, like I don't have a problem wearing them or walking in them and stuff like that. But when you're in heels and you're on like concrete and like outside, like it just gets so painful that I had to like ditch those shoes after photos. I just like put on whatever sandals I had with me for the day. You couldn't really see it because my dress was obviously to the floor. So my best advice for brides, even though you love heels, maybe just have like a backup pair of shoes definitely for your wedding. I I know a friend that wore like sneaker heel those like platform heel things I mean just make it personal but yeah I would say if you don't like heels definitely don't go for a heel 
even me, I like totally suffered. So that was a bad, bad plan on my part. But the shoes were beautiful. I will insert pictures again, of course, because I did love those shoes. I still have them. I've never worn them since my wedding, but they are freaking gorgeous. Okay, alterations. I got lucky. Again, my friend's mom, one of the best alteration people in Fargo. So she altered my dress. I really didn't need a lot of alterations. The dress fit me perfectly. The only thing is, like I said, I did buy a sample. So there was a tear, but my dress, my skirt had a lot of tools. So the first layer of my skirt, we actually had to chop off. And also, so this is also a funny random side note, it's really expensive to buy a whale. In case you guys didn't know, I don't mean like whale, like fish in the sea, like a whale. And they're so expensive and like the belts too are so expensive. Like you're paying like one fourth the cost of your wedding dress in accessories. So I got so lucky because the top layer that we took off my dress and my mom is so good at sewing. She actually made my veil and she also made the belt that I'm wearing um, or that I wore on our on our wedding day, which was fantastic because I didn't want to pay for any of those accessories at the at your day because they were so freaking expensive. So I got lucky there. And it was so funny because I sent my mom a swatch of the color of my dress because she was gonna buy the material for my veil in Sri Lanka. And she got the swatch and everything, but when she got here with the pink, it was like this hideous like candy floss pink. So we got so lucky that we had enough tool to use from the skirt to make my veil, which was really, really special in the end. I mean, like how cool is that that my mom made some of those accessories that I wore on our wedding day. So that was cool. Hair and makeup, I did my own makeup, which I've talked about before in a video and I don't recommend, even if you are the most skilled makeup artist, I think you should definitely just pay somebody to do your makeup because you're so stressed on your wedding day. You know, like my eyeliner was fucked up and then I had to do like eyeliner surgery and I had these like stiletto nails and it was so hard for me to get my like lashes on and I freaking, had the Huda Beauty eyelashes and they have such a thick band. Luckily I have a friend, what did she cheer for? She cheered for like a basketball team and so she was so used to like getting fake lashes on, she like did it for me, thank God she was around. And yeah, it's just so stressful. I would not recommend just pay somebody to do your makeup, you're doing yourself a huge favor. Also, like I didn't practice my makeup for my wedding, like what an idiot. Anyway. <laughs> Bad idea, don't do your own makeup. And also hair, I had an awesome hairstylist. Her name is Jenna. She was recommended to me by a friend because I wanted like a braid and so somebody I know was like, Jenna does amazing braids. So if you guys need a wedding hairstylist, I would 100% recommend her. If you want her information, send me a DM. I will get you in touch with Jenna because she's amazing. Favors, we did, it was cool, my parents, they came up with all these crazy ideas, but in Sri Lanka for weddings, they usually have like some kind of favor. Um, we also do wedding cake and it's a different kind of cake than here. Um, it's like a fruit cake with like a white icing. It's amazing. Sri Lankan wedding cake. If you ever get the chance to, oh my God, so good. So my mom, bless her heart, actually like flew with all this wedding cake and we like put it in a little box with a little bow and like it was super cute. So that's what we did for wedding favors. You don't have to have wedding favors, but that's just what we did. Undergarments, that was fun. I had like a strapless top, so I needed like a very padded bra to like push up the girls, you know? So we did go to like a specialty store in Fargo and found myself like a nude bra, so that worked out just fine. And I had like some lacy panties to wear in case anyone needs to know that. And programs, my uncle in Sri Lanka, again, works for a printing company. So all my programs were actually done in Sri Lanka and my mom carried them. Again, another great way to save money because we didn't have to pay for them and fucking programs are expensive. So whatever you can do to save money, that's what I did. Rings, um, what, what, I mean, we had our rings. Uh, I think looking back right now with my rings, I'm not even wearing my wedding band today, but I have this gorgeous like um, vintage like mid-century modern looking ring. It's um, the emerald cut rings, I mean diamonds, and it's a beautiful ring. I love the vibe of my ring. In retrospect though, I wish we had gone with a different jeweler. We just went to the mall because 
we, I, like, I feel like my husband would have spent any amount of money to make me happy, but I didn't want to do that to him. So I tried to be as cost effective as I could when it came to our, my ring. And so I, sometimes I'm like, I joke, but it's like, ah, I kind of shot myself in the foot with that because I feel like I would have ended up with something a lot bigger and sparklier if I had just sent him on his own, but it's okay. We can always upgrade. So I'm not too mad about it. And then Rails Band is a rose gold comfort fit men's band and he loves that thing it's so comfortable so if your husbands or fiancés are wondering um he loves it i know there's like carbon fiber rings and stuff like that those i've heard tend to break depending on like what your husband does for a living but real loves his rose gold wedding band and he like literally never takes his wedding band off because he doesn't even feel it on his hand so just a little pro tip for you guys i didn't do a wedding website i know it's a thing I feel like, okay, this is personally like my thought process, so don't get mad if I offend you, but um, I just feel like, you know, are you really that important for people to want to go to a separate website and check like your wedding information, which is why I decided to go with Facebook because everyone basically checks out Facebook, and so I think wedding websites are obnoxious, like really, I mean, they are, okay? That's just my opinion, so you can do it with whatever you want. I think it's a waste of time. Okay, so yeah, I, I feel like I covered everything. I've been talking forever and then I have a list of things I wish I could change. So number one, I wish I had had a wedding coordinator, not to be high maintenance, but my actual day was just so stressful because again, we had family from out of the country. Most of them couldn't drive. So it was just so hard to coordinate. And then at our reception, my poor husband, like, Somebody had put their car keys in like a backpack that was in a car that he then had to spend like a majority of our reception sorting that situation out. So a lot of my wedding dance, I didn't even see him. I just feel like a planner or like a relative that isn't that close to the family, but is like super responsible and still cares about you having a good day. Like you need to identify that person and put them in charge, give them a schedule freaking like do the work so I wish I had done that I wish that we had somebody that was in charge of doing all the other stuff so that me and Rel could have fun also a thing that was different in like planning a wedding in America you don't have like that setup I know in it seems like in Sri Lanka there's people that are paid to like do all your shit for you um, in the US I mean all of that is extra cost so basically the morning of our wedding we did have to go in and set up like our backdrop and like our decorations and our guest book and things like that so that was a little bit of an annoyance i wish i didn't have to do all of that and i feel like paying a wedding coordinator would have taken care of all of that shit for me also i did forget to talk about our guest book oh my gosh our guest book was so cute we did a globe i saw this idea on pinterest and it was so cute because people just signed the globe and now it's a piece that we have displayed in our house and it just works with our decor and that was just such a good idea because guest books like what are you gonna do with a guest book you're gonna like close it up and toss it in a closet or toss it in like a memory box and I was not about that life I love our globe so if you can do something where it can be displayed so you have that memory I think it's a little bit more personal so sorry um, so wedding planner uh, number two, didn't really see real. Like I said, we just had so much going on, so I wish we had kind of made more time for each other on our wedding day. So I know it's like a total cliche when people say like your wedding day goes by so fast, but it's so freaking true. And I just wish we had made more time for each other. And I feel like I wish like our families had been more conscious of that too. So whatever you can do to carve out that time for each other, I think that's the most exciting part of your wedding that you have time for each other and it didn't feel like we did that very well number three is ask for help i didn't i was so determined not to be a bridezilla i'm sure people will still say i was a bridezilla because you can never make everyone happy but i really wish i had done a better job of asking people for help i feel like you know people almost like want to help you but they don't want to be obnoxious and there were people that ponied up and helped that i didn't even like imagine would help so i'm so thankful for those people but i i feel like i should have done a better job of just saying like hey i need help for this this and this and getting people in place ahead of time would have been like a real like saver lifesaver for me and rail okay number four of course no heels i talked about the whole heel debacle number five was a videographer i feel like i already talked about that 
Uh, number six is more about us, less about everyone else. Like I said, again, I felt like it was such a busy day. I feel like we were, you know, running around trying to make everyone else happy. We didn't get a lot of like couple time that day, which was rough. Uh, number seven. Oh my gosh, yes, this is a good one. Number seven, Pinterest isn't always like what you're going to end up with. I feel like Pinterest is definitely like helpful and a curse because until you start planning your wedding, you think like all of these things you see on Pinterest is like what you can accomplish, but really your budget will bring you down back to reality real quick because people think like, hey, that's not going to cost that much. Or like people see these things on Pinterest and they're like, I need that. Well, no, you don't need it. You need to prioritize. So don't think that Pinterest is like what you're going to get on your wedding day. Definitely try and be more realistic about your budget and your venue and like what expectations you have of like your florist and your DJ and things like that. It's very important. Also your photographer because let's be real, some of those photos on Instagram and Pinterest are like mind blowing. And obviously if your photographer is not at that level, like if you're paying somebody a thousand dollars to cover your wedding, you can't expect like a whole like curated wedding album which like these amazing photos you just can't I'm sorry you just can't because that person will be getting all the business in your town if they could do your wedding so well for that budget so anyway that's tip number seven because I think Pinterest really gets people oh and then number eight I forgot my like bag for the next day so when we um, were said and done, we got to our hotel room and I had like no pajamas and I was really upset about it because I just, I don't like to sleep naked. <laughs> so I really forgot like everything for the next day. So I look like a hot mess going home after our wedding, but that's okay. That, that's okay. And then number nine, which is not on here, but I just thought about, you know, if you guys like, are having a wedding at like a barn or whatever the heck still do yourself a favor and if you are able to definitely book yourself a hotel room for that night because it is really fun and of course for me and real we had people staying in our apartment so it was nice to have that one day to or that one night just to ourselves and have a nice room and our room was actually included with our wedding so that worked out really really well for us Okay guys, this video was so long. I hope I covered as much as I could. If you have any questions, if I forgot anything, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'd be so happy to answer any questions you have. Of course, no, I'm not a professional wedding planner, but I feel like our wedding turned out pretty awesome. I mean, obviously that's like my bias opinion, but I think the pictures look great. We had a great time, you know, it all worked out. It all worked out in the end. and. We made some great memories, so yeah, let me know if you need any help. I'd be happy to assist you with any questions you might have. Thank you so much for watching this video. Definitely leave me a comment if you made it to the end because I have a feeling it's going to be hella long. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye, guys.